come and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. In the third day he will raise us up. And we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning. And he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver, of a whole piece shalt thou make them, that thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly, and for the journeying of the camps. And when they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Shalom <clears throat> Chavrim, good, good to be with you again, and uh, on Shabbat uh, Live last Friday night, we were discussing Psalm 83 a little bit in there, um, and I thought I would do a little teaching on that this morning, here on, uh, this is a Sunday right now, <clears throat> because I'm, I'm afraid that a lot of people have misunderstood this scripture based on theology that is going on right now. Um, and the sad thing is, the more that we dig into the Vatican series and getting this prepared for you guys, uh, it is becoming quite evident that doctrines are, are made popular all around the world as a result of whatever influence the churches are wanting to teach the people. And it's quite sad uh, that this is actually happening. But it's an agenda, and it's an agenda of the Vatican. And... I want to let you guys know as well, we have, since we started this series, uh, have been warned uh, all the way up to very high commands uh, in this world, I'll just say it like that, as to be very careful about what we say and how we present this series. So if you do not think that the Vatican is where the Antichrist and the false prophet both are spurned from, then you might want to think again. It's kind of interesting because if you, if you look at it, we don't see the word Antichrist mentioned anywhere in the, uh, in the book of Revelation, but we find uh, the false prophet mentioned there. And I personally believe that they are one and the same. I do not think it's two different ones. I've held that view for quite some time. I have, uh, since speaking more and more with biblical teachers that I became... Um, um, uh, befriended in modern times, I've allowed some of their influence to kind of sway me away from my original thought. But I'm going back and really prayerfully seeking out what we should speak about and what should be said, because there is an agenda here, and it's to promote this, this Vatican uh, as the great super peacemaker world power. Uh, it's the reason why you see so many churches um, around the world, they have built their ecumenical movement and they ha are silencing all the previous doctrines of the Protestant Reformation that, that this is not true, that the Vatican never was the Antichrist. They, they, they're pushing it all off on uh, the Muslim world uh, and they bring in their own teachers, such as uh, even like Walid Shabbat. I know he's going to be on... A program this coming Friday that I'm on as well and uh, and he as well uh, lifts up the Catholic Church as being a great a great church and, uh, and and they do a great work 
and he really bashes the Muslim people. And uh, but we only find out that a lot of things about him are not as what they really appear. So, uh, and he's not alone. There, there's many, many, many well-known, well-respected uh, Christian scholars have changed their views against the Vatican, and for the only reason being is because they have been conquered by the Vatican. Uh, you can go back and see it. If you can find any of their early teachings, it'd be something you'd have to have probably personally, because a lot of it's been removed from the Internet. Uh, you'll find out that they at one point in time did teach against that. That's why we looked at Revelation not too long ago and saw where God said, you suffered that woman Jezebel. That's what he had against them. They suffered the woman Jezebel. And that's what causes Jezebel to uh, once again get, get control of Israel. Uh, as I mentioned before to you guys, uh, history is just repeating itself. Uh, Rome, secular Rome, was in control of Israel when, when Yeshua was here on the earth. And now that uh, 2,000 years have elapsed, again, Rome, now Papal Rome, is taking control of Israel once again. So <clears throat> I want to just kind of set that as your stage there. Um, and a lot of the things in the Vatican series we're definitely going to go into. Uh, we've had a lot of threats regarding that uh, to basically keep our mouth shut, is putting it the polite way, and not say anything. And um, it's come from a, a, a several different directions. And um, it just makes me realize that we're touching a nerve. We have touched the nerve on a very, very high level. And, uh, but it does not deter me, not in the slightest bit, because we're going to bring this out. Also makes me wonder what happened to Alan Lamont. We don't hear from him much anymore, so if anyone knows Alan Lamont, able to contact him, I'd love for him to get in touch with me um, as we continue to expose these things. Uh, anyway, Psalm 83, and, and, and you're going to find a lot of times the reason why I'm going to teach things differently than what you normally see it. It's because it's not what the Lord is revealing to me. Uh, I have noticed that Satan has definitely infiltrated the Christian realm. And he's giving people all kinds of inspiration and stuff. And people are saying that these things are coming from the Lord only to teach you things that are not biblical. Uh, to throw the light off of the true Antichrist that's coming. Uh, that has already been in them. We know, that as, as, you know, as Paul said, uh, it's the spirit of Antichrist is already in the world. And it, it just continued to raise up. And as the scripture says, it's lifted up the head. Uh, in other words, it's now it's starting to show himself, is what we're going to see in Psalm 83. He's starting to show himself who he really is. And uh, you're not going to see the Muslim world create a one world religion. So, you know, get that out of your head immediately. Uh, the Vatican's the only one right now who's making that one world religion. Now, a lot of people say, oh yeah, we know the Vatican's going to produce the false prophet. Well, the false prophet and the Antichrist are the same fellow. It's not two different guys. you got to remember, Satan wanted to be like God, worshipped as if he were God. And the only way Satan can do that is to create a doctrine that makes you think that God is, that we have multiple gods. Like you have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm not just talking about the, a true trinity. Is God himself is manifested as. He, God himself is Yeshua as a sacrifice. God himself, the Holy Spirit, is God's Spirit. It's what's inside of him that he's able to impart upon each and every one of us. Does that mean that there's billions of gods on the earth? No. There's only one God, but he allows his life to come in us to give us eternal life. Okay, so this is, this is God. He's able to do that. Well, Satan, though, wants to pervert that because the only way Satan can be worshipped is if he can get you convinced that there is one person here that's God, that Yeshua is another person that's God over here off to this side, and that the Holy Ghost is even yet another God. And then I heard this one uh, teacher say that, you know, the, that, the, that the Christian people are praying to the Holy Spirit. Oh, wow. He said, you're supposed to be going through Yeshua. You're supposed to go through Jesus to get to God. There again, Satan is able to get worship then. Because as long as he can get you to break this all up, separate it out to a bunch of different gods, 
then he can step in the place and take that place as one. So Satan also comes with his own trinity, and that is where he'll work under the, 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 uh, the part of the Antichrist, uh, where he's come down through the succession of popes, the dynasty of popes. That's why the Antichrist has always been in the world. Uh, he is the false prophet in the final end, and then he is also the son of perdition, and that's when he actually incarnates that last man on this earth to fulfill his mission. Uh, so there is your trinity uh, amongst uh, Satan himself, and uh, is Satan himself manifesting himself in three as well in order to be worshipped. So let's get right into this. Psalm 83, Keep thou not silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make atonement, and they, hate, they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Or they, they're, they're uh, oh, how would I, let me read, let me read it to you here from, from uh, the Torah that I have it words that a little bit better. Um, For behold, your foes are in an uproar, and those who hate you have raised their head. Okay, there's, there's where you have that right there. Um, and their head, by the way, when it's, the head is singular, they raise their head. Now, if we look at this in, uh, in Hebrew, Tachalim, Pegimel, uh, let me just take you right over here to it. Nasu um, Rosh. The Rosh, the head, is singular. The Nasu is the people themselves are lifting up their head. They're lifting up their leader is what they're doing. They're raising him up. And this is what we're finding right now that's really taking place in the Vatican today and around the world. The world, both political, both uh, the media, everyone, different leaders of the world are raising up. They're lifting up their leader now. Uh, Francis, Pope Francis is being lifted up like never before. So they have, they're, they're in an uproar. They're really getting excited. And now they're lifting up their head. They're raising up their leader. You know, that's what they're doing. Their false prophet. Their antichrist. Uh, remember, the word antichrist is from the Greek word antichristo, which is instead of or takes the place of. The Catholic Church believes that the Pope is the Vicar of Christ, the replacement. He's God on earth. And uh, I believe it was, uh, I forget what year it was, I want to say it was 1867, but I may be wrong on that, uh, that is when they uh, announced that the Pope was infallible. Uh, very interesting. We're going to go through the history of that in the Vatican series here when we get ready to post that very soon again. But anyway, so they've, they've, they've raised up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Hmm. Consulted against thy hidden ones. Okay. Now the counsel that they're doing, and let me just, again, I'm going to read this to you here from the Torah, or the Tanakh. Um, against your people, they, have, they, they plot deviously. They take counsel against those hidden by you, or sheltered by you. Now, the word sinfon is hidden. And uh, that's exactly what it is. Those that are hidden are, hid are the hidden ones. The hidden ones are your two witnesses. Now, there's those that have believed that that is the bride, the raptured saints, but what good would it do you to counsel against the hidden ones if the bride is already hidden? These are hidden. They're already hidden. Okay? It's not like they're going to be hidden. They're hidden now. But to take counsel, why? Because they have a Christian Bible that tells them plainly in Revelation 11 that these two guys, there's two guys coming. And this is a problem for them. It's a problem for their agenda. Um, therefore, they have to teach all kinds of false doctrines on the two witnesses as well. Because if they can get you to believe something false on that, uh, then it's already happened. That's why, the, you know, the Vatican is the one who has created all the cults, clans, and everything in the world. They, cre they created Islam. They have created every cult that's come along uh, in the world today. They've had their hand in it. That's how they have brought about to, to, to pull down the Protestant Reformation was through the Jesuit order. And so, therefore, they have subverted and taught false doctrine to no end to get you to believe a lie. So that you don't recognize what's happening. 
This is why the people fall for people like Walid Shabbat. Walid Shabbat claims to have been a part of the PLO, and yet his own family interviewed on CNN denies that, said he was just an average kid. He was a good kid. He never did anything bad. He claims to have thrown a bomb in a bank in, in Bethlehem, and it blew up. And if you watch another interview about Walid Shabbat, Walid Shabbat says that he didn't throw the bomb in there. He was going to throw the bomb in there, but he saw some little kids outside, some Muslim children, and he didn't want to kill any Muslim children, so he walked away. Well, it was the Jerusalem Post that actually exposed him to begin with to be a false person that's coming over, but he's paid tremendous amounts of money. Unbelievable. In our little ministry here, if, if we, you know, our, of course, we our first year and second year, hardly nothing actually came in here, if anything. Uh, but people more and more are starting to want to support this ministry. But even at that, uh, I haven't looked at the records of the, as of yet, but 10,000, maybe a little over that, something like that this year. You'd be surprised. But in Walid Shabbat's ministry, over a half million dollars in 2009 alone was the report that was, that was looked at on him. So, uh, and he speaks everywhere and... And when you listen to his speeches that are given, especially when he's speaking to uh, police departments, uh, Department of Homeland Security uh, meetings, things like that, he's paid $5,000 at a whack to do those. And boy, he slams Islam. And, uh, but a lot of people don't know, though, that he really promotes the Vatican as well. As being the church that if it hadn't have been them, where would I be today? Uh, so you really got to know whose side you're on. And the whole idea of the Vatican is to get the people to believe that Islam is the problem. But then, yeah, then they turn around and sign a covenant with them in 2009 with the, uh, with the Arab League. You know, they're all coming back home to mama. This is why the church leaders now preach that, that you no longer hear like you did back 100 years ago that the Antichrist was the Catholic Church. Now everybody... Oh, they've gotten so much more intelligent now. Uh, now Islam is where the Antichrist is coming from. And Rome actually had a West and Eastern side. Yes, they did. That's true. But isn't it funny how that when uh, Titus, the Roman general, what did he do? He took everything back to Rome where the Vatican sits. He took the temple treasures back to Rome where the Vatican sits. He didn't take it out there to the east side of Rome that Rome was controlling doesn't matter who Rome used to, as far as the soldiers. The spoils of the war, the temple that was destroyed, the second temple, all that was taken to the Vatican. So, and they're going to try to use that with Israel. Um, a lot of things we're going to, you're going to find out here. So anyway, so we have in Revelation 11, uh, there's two witnesses, and this is their problem. This is why they consulted against thy hidden ones. This, in Revelation 11, um, after they're talking about the uh, rising and measuring the temple, says, verse 3, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score day, days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. Don't forget that. Don't forget that right there. Fire just proceeds from their mouth, devours their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Hmm, sounds like Elijah to me, doesn't it? Sure to you as well. Um, over the waters turn them, and, and, and excuse me, the days of their prophecy, and have power <clears throat> over waters to turn them to blood. Sounds like Moses, doesn't it? Hmm. I've never seen Enoch do anything like this. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. And plus, we've never seen Enoch show up with Elijah on Mount Transfiguration either. Wow. That's a strange thought. Oh, but he must die. Don't forget. Let me tell you something. When people use that as the defense for Enoch, that he must die. I don't care if you don't believe in a rapture. Paul plainly says, We which are alive and remain shall not prevent or hinder them which are asleep, for we shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. Now, it doesn't matter if you believe in a rapture or don't believe in a rapture because both groups believe that scripture. The only difference is, is the ones that don't believe in the pre-trib rapture or they look at it maybe as a mid-trib rapture. you got another group that does that. But the post-tribbers are just simply, in other words, when it's all over, 
With those that are alive and standing, we're going to go ahead and go up now. We're going to go ahead and meet the Lord now. Wait a minute. I thought you quote that scripture, it's appointed once unto man to die and after this the judgment. How does that work? When do they come back and die? Is this something else, part of the Bible we are missing that God hasn't given to us? The appointed in Greek is not what you think it is. It's not an absolute. It is to show you that as a general rule, you're going to die. Doesn't mean you have to die once or twice. And then, of course, you got Lazarus. I guess Lazarus was appointed to death twice. You see what I'm saying? You can really start to make the scripture messed up when you try to work it out like that. You know? So, God is showing you who they are by their gifts that they have. Now, whether or not it's the literal Moses and Elijah, or if it's just Moses and Elijah anointing two people as Elijah's spirit was upon Elisha, as Elijah's spirit was upon John the Baptist. As God said to Moses, you will uh, anoint Joshua. He will be a prophet in your room, in your place. Same thing he said to Elijah about Elisha. It's not a reincarnation now. It's just the fact, in other words, the same type of spirit that God had placed on them was on these other guys. Okay, so anyway, just a thought for you to think about. Now, if any man will hurry and look what we know about that, fire proceeds out of the mouth. Verse 6, these have power to shut the heavens that it rained not in the days of their ministry. We did that in the blood. Verse 7, and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Let me read back. Let's go back to Psalm 83 and look at that again then. Let's see what he says there. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. That's Israel. That's this little two-state solution. They're very sneaky about what they're doing. Okay? Huh. And consulted against thy hidden ones. The whole time that this is going on, this two-state solution thing they're trying to work out, John Kerry, United States, working with the Vatican, they're trying to figure this out. They look at Bible codes too. Don't think they don't. They do. They're trying to figure out who are these two witnesses. And no, I mean, yes, have they, have they looked at the possibility that it's the literal Moses and Elijah coming back? Yes, they have. Have they looked at it, the fact that it could be two men anointed with that spirit? Oh, yes, they have. The whole thing that they've looked at is what do we do when they come? Now, no doubt, in their mind, they probably figure two guys are just going to think that they're called to do this, and then we'll kill them, be done with them, and it'll be a mockery, and we'll show that there's nothing to this. But their plan is to kill them. That's why they've consulted. Their, con their consultation is revealed in Revelation. What, their consultation is to kill them. It doesn't say that in the Psalms, but it does say it in Revelation. They're going to kill them is what they're going to do. That, but it won't happen until that, that beast rises up. Okay, let's, let's go back to that again. All right, and when they, verse 7, they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Hmm. <laughs> you know, that's interesting. It's spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Egypt is for the Ishmaelites. Sodom is for the children of Lot. Don't forget that. That's also written in Psalm 83 as well. All right, so keep that in mind. But he tells you where our Lord was crucified. It's called Sodom and Egypt. Why? Because the Vatican, along with the Ishmaelites, come in and take over. And it says later in Psalm 83, they've hoping the children of Lot. Wow. Incredible. Their dead bodies shall lie in the street, the great city which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they and all the people of the kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies. Their, de their three days and a half shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. They have come and preached the true Yeshua, who Mashiach is, the remnant of Israel that believe, believe it, there is a mass influx of Jews that is happening during this time because of the persecution of the Jews around the world. Do not think, Yehudim, that you're not going to be persecuted and hunted down and slaughtered. 
They're planning on trying to annihilate you once again, especially American Jewry. Don't, remember in the Holocaust, I mean, there was many Jews that got little favoritism and stuff because why? They worked with Hitler. Hitler was a puppet of the Vatican. Not only was Hitler a puppet, but he worked in conjunction with Churchill and with Stalin. Oh, gosh. Wait till we bring that out. Hang on. It's not going to look good. It was a plot. The Vatican was the one that wanted to get rid of the Jews to start with. They wanted to deal with the Jewish agenda, and they used Hitler to do their job. Hitler has even stated, I'm only going to finish what the church has already started. He was paid very well to do so, and so did he make his money from the United States to do so. They built that machine that they have there, that they did. All right, so their bodies are laying in the streets dead for three days and a half. And the reason why God does that is because in order for God to bring judgment on the world, he has to have two witnesses. And they're witnessing the death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua by being killed, laid in the street dead, openly without graves so that everybody can see it, the world can see it, it'll be continuously monitored, and it's going to be just a joke. Oh, it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen, we're going to prove to you these are just two jokes, these are just two uh, liars. But when they raise up, and they shall dwell upon the earth and shall rejoice over them and make merry. Don't forget that. They rejoice while, this, while their dead bodies are laying there. They shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. Ooh, they cause a ruckus, don't they? And after three days and a half, the spirit of light from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them and the same hour was there a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell and the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven and the second woe is past and behold the third woe cometh quickly now that was to set the stage here again for Psalm 83 all right, so they've taken crafty counsel against thy hidden ones, verse 3. They have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation that, they, that the name of Israel may be no more remembered. That's the intent. You don't see this in the peace talks. You don't realize that's the agenda because, it, the, the, remember, they said here, they have taken crafty counsel. That's done in secret. It's the ultimate goal is to wipe off Israel. The Vatican's goal has always been to wipe out the Jews. Why? Satan knows if he can get rid of God's chosen people, he'll win the war against God. So he wants to snuff them out anywhere they are. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's in Israel or if it's across the world, the United States and any other country. Wipe them out. Don't you know that Stalin, he was doing that thing in Russia to push all the Jews towards the west to do what wipe them out satan all the time all right but they have consulted together hmm. verse 5 as psalm 83 for they have consulted together with one consent their confederate against thee now who's they my jewish brethren <laughs> God's trying to get you to understand who's against you. That's what he's going to show you. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites. Edom is singular. Ishmaelites is plural. Because Ishmaelites represent all the other nations. Esau and Jacob, though, in the womb, only represent two. The Ishmaelites represent the Arab world as a whole. So he said, the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites. And we find out later in history, and I'll bring you up through this in the Vatican series, that Edom becomes the Vatican. They are Mount Sierra. This is uh, excuse me, uh, Ezekiel 35. So he shows you who's against them. The tabernacles of Edom. Hmm. Do you realize when it says tabernacles, that's churches. 
It's not just the Vatican. It's the whole ecumenical movement is against you. Every church and denomination that came and bowed down to the Pope, uh, uh, the last Pope, Pope Benedict that was in there, every single denomination that was there represented that bowed to that Pope, showing their obedience and loyalty to the Catholic Church. The Baptists and the, and the, uh, the, um, the Pentecostals and the, and the Charismatic, the whole group, evangelical, actually, I'm sorry, evangelicals, and the, and the Pentecostals, the Baptists, they were all represented there too by their leaders. The world leaders were there of these movements showing allegiance to the Vatican. So the tabernacles of Adam, those that he's conquered, are all against you. And the Ishmaelites. See? Adam is the Vatican only, but the tabernacles that have joined with him through the ecumenical council we find in Revelation, who could make war with the beast, so they've made an image of the beast. They've come against you. As well as the governments of the world that back them up. Moab and the Hagarines and Gibal and Ammon and the Amalek and, and the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Asar also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot. What did I tell you? Sodom and Egypt. They call it spiritually Sodom and Egypt. Lot's children and the Ishmaelites are after that city. That's why they call it spiritually Sodom and Egypt. It's really for the, for the Catholic Church and it's for the, the Muslim world for their faith. Why? Well, they created Islam. So what do you expect? There was a brother that did deep research on this and I need to pull out some of his information. He really did some wonderful work going back and proving uh, because he, I think he was kind of questioning whether or not I was right on this or not. And so he did a lot of research and did a marvelous job on proving that Adam does become the Vatican. Do unto them as unto the Midianites and as to the Caesarea. Now, oh, by the way, uh, Assur right there is Syria, modern day Syria. Notice what he says there though. Assur also is joined with them. Now, why does it say that they're also joined with them? The, the ironic thing about this is that they're a war-torn nation right now through civil war. But now they're working on to do peace talks. This daily is starting to progress. They've sent word to the Vatican that they're, they're able to get these things worked out now under certain, certain conditions. That's why it's kind of like a little delay. They're also joined. In other words, they will become a part of this as well. Syria will become a part of this. All right, let's move down. Do unto them as unto the Midianites and as to Caesarea, as to the Jabin and the brook of Kishon, which perisheth at Endor. They became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and Zeb. Yea, all their princes as Zeb and as Zelma, who said, Let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. O oh my God, make them like a wheel as the stubble before the wind. Now, this is Israel crying out for that mercy of what to do to those that are bring, coming against them. Now, that's, this is what's interesting. Watch what the judgment comes on to them. As the fire burneth a wood, and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire. Oh, wow. Sounds like Elijah, doesn't it? You know? And by the way, wood, you know, there's a scripture that actually speaks of people as trees. Um, hmm. So persecutest them with thy tempest, make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame, that they may seek thy, thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and be troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that thou whose name alone is Hashem, art, of, art, excuse me, art the most high over all the earth. Now, you probably think, where's Moses at in all this? Okay, let's go verse 16 and let's do some Hebrew 101 lessons for you guys. Okay. We read in verse 16, again, let me take you here back to the King James uh, 
fill their faces with shame. Excuse me, I'm sorry, verse 15. So persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. Verse 15. All right, in Hebrew it's in verse 16. So let me just look at that again for you. Um, okay, here. Okay, Ruach Ha'esh, the spirit of fire, Tabaaya Al. Okay. Asurecha. Okay. Pursue them with your tempest. All right. And terrify them with your storm. The storm itself, in Hebrew, Bebusuf. Decha. That's your storm. Now what's interesting is the root of that storm is the word suf. What kind of storm? He says here, Uva suf decha tabachalim. How would you look at that in English again? And terrify them with your storm. God is taking through the prophet or, or David in his song, and he's telling God to terrify them with the storm. What storm? The same type of storm that God did when Moses was on earth at the Red Sea, and God came down on the mountain and he sat there and he blew from his nostrils, and the sea opened up with that kind of storm. He's referring you back to the Red Sea with the same storm that he did there. Okay, now, in that case, let's take a look, quick look then at Exodus. And let's see, because the question always comes up, you know, you know, it's not like he can't see all the types that is Moses going to be there. But let's just see what he does say when they came out of the sea there. Okay, chapter 15. Shmot, Tedva. Az Yeshua Moshe uvenei Yisrael et hashiras hazot ladonai veyomru lemor ha hashira ladonai kiga ago o sus verekavo rama beyom. Moses is saying, "I will sing unto the Lord that you have gotten victory over the horse, over his rider, and you've cast them into the sea." Future event. Ah shira. I will sing. Now, the thing is, the problem is, is the whole host of the Egyptian army, including Pharaoh, are all dead. 600. He's talking about one horse and one rider. He doesn't say, Susim Verekevuim. There's nothing there about all these chariots and all these horses. He sings about one. And that's that Antichrist spirit. And even though the two witnesses are killed, he knows that he's gotten victory over them. Why? I believe he sings it at his when he's dying. Because the Antichrist has no idea that when he's trying to kill him and he succeeds, it is only to bring judgment and to finalize the victory of God. Now, so we see that there. And in closing, let me just share this with you as well. Uh, Ezekiel 35. Actually, we're going to do more than just Ezekiel 35. We're going to go into Ezekiel 36 just a little bit. It's important that you see these things that are written here. In Ezekiel 35, what happens there? Because thou, has, and I'm going to verse 5, because thou has had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the, by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Even at the time that God is going to end the iniquity of Israel, they're still trying to shed the blood of the Jews. Knowing that God promised to gather Israel from all nations and you still want to try to kill them. You see the prophecies being fulfilled. That wicked Vatican and all the churches that come against Israel as well. Shame on you for not recognizing your place to stand with Israel when you should. 
The Bible plainly says you suffered that woman Jezebel. You allowed. Had you brought the true gospel, he would not need two witnesses to go to Israel. But he knew that you were going to do this. He knew that you would change and you would allow Jezebel, Shimon Perez, to go in there and marry that woman and bring her down into Israel as the son of Ahab. And God swore he would bring that judgment out upon his son. Verse 6, Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate, and cut from him that passeth out, and him that returneth. That's all the dignitaries. That's, that's all the great men and stuff. All the little Vatican puppets uh, that have to, you know, it's like, like your taxes here in America. Do you know all your taxes here goes to the bank there in England and from there goes, that's the black pope takes care of you there. And then, of course, it ends up at the Vatican in the end. You think your taxes are here. Okay, whatever. All right. And I will fill his mountains with his slain men and thy hills and thy valleys and all thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword. I will make thee a perpetual desolations and thy cities shall not return and you shall know that I am the Lord. You destroyed the temple with your Roman general Titus. He will destroy the Vatican as well, but you will not rebuild the Vatican. Because thou hast said these two nations and these two countries shall be mine. Ezekiel saw well over 2,500 years before it ever happened that you were going to take and divide the land and make it into two nations. Do you know how Yasser Arafat was raised up by the Jesuits in order to create the PLO to make it a, a priority to turn it into another state in the middle of Israel when they really had no claim or right to that at all. They did that because Israel, too many Jews that were coming home were genuine Jews that really loved God and they weren't going to go along and play this puppet game. And by the way, let me tell you another little thing too. Shimon Perez, excuse me, uh, Ariel Sharon, so many of you want to look bad on him. Ariel Sharon only went into a coma because he was poisoned by Shimon Perez. That's why he went into a coma, because Ariel Sharon would not allow the Vatican to come in there and rule the land of Israel. So they had to get him out of the way. This is why they're trying to rush this through with Shimon Perez. While he's still alive, because he's the one that started this in 1992 and 1993. Unbelievable. Because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, we will possess it whereas the Lord was there. I mean, he's telling you where this is at. Not only that, he's telling you that when Yeshua came in human flesh, Yeshua was Hashem. In a human body. And don't tell me God can't become a man because he did it before Abraham. And Moshe wrote in the Torah that it was Hashem that said to Abraham. When Abraham asked him the question, if there be ten righteous in the city, will you spare it? And Moshe wrote that it was Hashem that was standing there with Abraham and told him as one of those men who ate the meat of that kid and drank the milk. Don't tell me that what, God can't become a man. God can do whatever he wants to do. Verse 11, Therefore as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to, their anger, to, their, to thine anger, according to thine envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them, and I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. Now you know when God reveals himself, when God himself, the God of heaven that came down out of heaven and came in the body of Yeshua to release the Spirit of God to the world so that we could be filled with the Holy Ghost, now you know when he's going to reveal himself to the Jews. Now, not discounting the fact that he sends the two witnesses to preach it, but he himself must raise out of his holy habitation and come down 
and reveal to them that he is the one. He says, and I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. The Vatican is judged right after the two witnesses are killed. Plain as day. Right in the scripture. Fix and read it. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, and that I have heard all thy blasphemies, which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel. Say they are laid desolate, they are given us to consume. Like Israel's too weak to defend herself. You just think you can come here and take her. Thus with your mouth you have boasted against me and multiplied your words against me. I have heard them. Thus saith the Lord God, When the whole earth rejoices, rejoices, I will make thee desolate. Did you forget what we read over in that book of Revelation? You know, for my Jewish brethren, it just works together. You just got to know how to read it. The, the, these false Christians are the ones that's got it all messed up to make you think it's false. They didn't want you knowing that this book was right. They intentionally have translated certain things to make it look like some other kind of agenda. That's why we have not been able to believe it. You need someone to come in there and put it in there right for you. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of this in Revelation 11, verse 8. Great city which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall, what? Rejoice over them and make merry. So when does God come and destroy their temple? The Vatican itself. Mm, back into Ezekiel 35. Thus saith the Lord God, when the whole earth rejoices, I will make thee desolate. And according to Revelation 11, 8, or 9 or 10, which we're, verse 10, the whole earth rejoices at the death of the two witnesses. That's when God destroys their temple. Remember, there's a mighty earthquake. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel because it was desolate, so will I do. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, all Adamia, even all of it, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Wow. Verse chapter 36. I want to get into this just a little bit with you. Also thou son of man prophesy against the mountains of Israel. Say, you mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy hath said against you, Aha! Even the ancient high places are ours in possession. See, they do get control of it. Sad as it is, they're going to get control of it. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, because they were made... They have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side that you might be a possession into the river residue of the heathen. And you are taken up in the lips of talkers. This is the peace process. You're taken up in the lips of talkers and are an infamy of the people. Oh, they just hate you. All they're doing is talking about you. This is your peace process. Therefore, you mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys and to the desolate waste and to the cities that are forsaken, which become a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all of Edomia which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with the despiteful minds to cast it out to pray. Now you know what they're going to do? They're pointing it to themselves. No wonder why John Kerry talks so boastfully. He can do what he wants to. Only for a short time. Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel and say unto the mountains and to the hills and to the rivers and the valleys, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury because you have borne the shame of the heathen. Therefore, saith the Lord God, I have lifted up mine hand. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. But O oh, you mountains of Israel, you shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit, my people of Israel, for they are at hand 
to come. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and you shall be tilled and sown. I will multiply men upon you, and all the house of Israel, even all of it, and the city shall be inhabited, and the waste shall be builded. I think we're going to be having a new influx of Jewish people coming into the homeland. And I will multiply, okay, man and beast upon you and increase to bring the fruit. And I will settle you after your old estates and I will do better unto you than at the beginnings. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel, and they shall possess thee. And thou shalt be their inheritance and thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of men. Thus saith the Lord. Let's jump on down a little bit further here. Let's go down to verse 16. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and their doings. And their ways was before me as the uncleanliness of a removed woman. Wherefore, I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had, had shed upon the, upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen and they were dispersed throughout the countries and according to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. Now see, this is where God is showing us our sins why we have been dispersed throughout the nations. All right? Verse 23, let's jump down to that one. I want you to see this. Actually, verse 21. I, but I had pity on my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, where, 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 wherever they went. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, but my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the heathen, wherever you went, and I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which you have profaned in the midst of them. And the Lord saith, uh, excuse me, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all the countries and will bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also I will give you, which is the Holy Ghost. And a new spirit will I put in the stony heart of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Now, this is the redemption of Israel. But it is incredible to see God does this for his own name's sake, not because of Israel being a great people. This is why Jesus makes that prayer. Yeshua says in his prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He was making the world pray for the return of Israel. Hallowed is to sanctify our Father in heaven. Sanctify your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy people, in other words, when they come, your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven because it's the full restoration of Israel. I wonder why Yeshua made the comment about when they ask him when the question, doesn't the scripture say Elias must first come and restore uh, and, and first come? And he says, truly, and John the Baptist is dead, by the way, when this question is asked. And he said, truly, Elias shall first come. And that's Elijah, by the way. That's Greek for Elijah. He shall first come and restore all things. The restoration of all things is the iniquity of Israel to be pardoned and forgiven and for them to receive the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Almighty God. Let's drop down to verse 30. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field that you shall re rejoice no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Then shall you remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Not for your sakes do I do this, saith the Lord God. Be known unto you, be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, in the day that I shall cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities and wastes shall be builded. So even though the children of Israel are there now, there's still a greater exodus coming. And he does it to fulfill his word. Now notice though what he says here. Be ashamed and confounded. That's Zechariah. 
Uh, Zechariah, what is it, chapter 10 or chapter 12? I forget exactly which one, where they looked upon him whom they pierced. And they weep and mourn as a family lost their only son. And they said, where did you get these wounds? In the house of my friends. Let's look at that real quick. It's really important that you see something here. I've said it many times, and we're closing now. Um, this is also the time when he makes Jerusalem a couple of trembling uh, for, for the rest of the world. And that day I would make Jerusalem a burden of stone for all the people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces through, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. That's, that's Zechariah chapter 12. Watch what happens though at the bottom end of that. It's laid together beautifully. Verse 10. I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. Do you notice that? Inhabitants of Jerusalem. So where is Israel supposed to be? Not like some people. And I, I believe people like Rob Skiba and guys like him, they mean well, but the problem is it's still, it's perpetrated in order to try to bring something that's not right. He says the inhabitants of Jerusalem, there are Jews in the homeland. Okay? When this happens, when, when, when there are a couple of trembling, Israel's in her homeland. The spirit of grace and supplications, and they shall look upon thee whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. And that day shall there be as a great mourning in Jerusalem, as the mourning of Hadrim, Hadrimon, and the valley of Megiddon. And the land shall mourn every family apart, the family of the house of David apart, and the wives apart, and the family of the house of Nathan apart, and their wives apart. The family of the house of Levi apart and their wives apart and the family of Shemai apart and their wives apart. They're not in tribal order, friends. They've actually returned to the land not knowing what tribe they belong to. Except the Levites. And God's word says they're Levites. I don't care what kind of false doctrine you want to bring in to support your Vatican agenda. God said that the, the family of Levi will be there. So they're there, and they do their separation according to Orthodox tradition. This isn't Reformed Judaism, my friends. The ones that you condemn so badly, and you talk about, oh, well, they spit on the Christians. Remember the guy that spit on David when he was going out? And David said, let him alone. God told him to do that. When David came back in power, that man was the first one to meet him and cry out for mercy. He was blinded to who David really was. And then he got the revelation. He is a type of the Jews right here. He is a type of that. That's an... Let me just share that with you, because I think there's something here you should know about that. Second Samuel, and I think that's chapter 19. Notice what David's what happens here. And King David said to Zadok and to Abithar the priest, saying, "There again, there's your two witnesses." Speaking to the elders of Judah, saying, Why are you the last to bring the king back to his house? Seeing the speech of all the house, excuse me, seeing the speech of all Israel is come to the king, even to his house. He's, they're witnessing to the, to the elders of Israel. That's what their job is, witness to them. You are my brother, and you are my bones and my flesh. Wherefore then are you the last to bring back the king? So sad. No wonder why there will be so much weeping when Yeshua returns. Because Israel is the last one to bring him home and to recognize who he is. And they say to Amsa, Art thou not my bone and my, my flesh? 
God do so to me, and more also, if thou be not captain of the host before the continually in the room of Joab. You notice how he says that their bone, of course, it's before this one here, their bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Remember how God made Eve, and Adam said, your bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. God himself became a man that we might become bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh and spirit of his spirit. And he bowed the heart of all the men of Judah, even of the heart of the man, of the one, of one man, so that they, they bowed him as, as of the heart of one man. The two witnesses will cause Israel to really believe. The king returned thou and thy servants. So the king returned and came to the Jordan and Judah, came to Gilgal and go, go, uh, go to meet the king and conduct the king over Jordan. And Shemai, the son of Gerir, a Benjamite, which was of Baharim, hasted and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. And there was a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons and his twenty servants with him. And they went over Jordan before the king. And there went over a ferry boat to carry over the king's household and to do what they thought good. And Shemai, the son of Gerir, fell down before the king as he was overcome over Jordan and said to the king, Let not my lord impute iniquity unto me, neither do thou remember that which thy servant did. Perversely this day that my lord the king went out of Jerusalem, that the king should take it to his heart. For thy servant doth know that I have sinned, therefore behold, I am come thee first this day of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet my lord the king. Remember the story in Joseph of Benjamin and how he was never guilty of what happened, but Joseph put his cup in his bag. And I told you why. It was a sign to the Jews of today. They are like the Benjamites of today. That cup was placed in his bag to show that in our day we're living in now, we're holding the cup of Yeshua. What will we do with it? I know what we will do. Like Shemai here, we will be the first to meet him and cry out for mercy. He didn't, he did not, he did not disavow what happened. He just asked for God to forgive him. And is it not say in Daniel chapter 9 to make an end of sin and reconciliation for iniquity? And then you look at Zechariah. And what does Zechariah tell us here? The family of the house of Levi apart and their wives apart. The family of Shemai apart and their wives apart. And you mean to tell me that the Jews that are there that actually crucified Yeshua 2,000 years ago are not there today? Yes, they are. God's word in Zechariah proves because Shimei was back here as a type to David. And he lets us know that the Levites that were the ones that were there when he was crucified are there now. And also Shimei. The Jews that were not, and Shimei represents not the Levites, but the Jews that were crying out, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. And they spit upon him and mocked him. That's the family of Shemai. The same Jews that were there 2,000 years ago, their children are there today. And as David said, because notice, they thought that he should be killed. They thought he should be killed. Watch what they say. And Abshai, 
The son of Zariah answered and said, Shall not Shemai be put to death for this because he cursed the Lord's anointed? There is Mashiach, brethren. There was Yeshua. And David said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zebariah, that you should this day be adversaries unto me? Shall there any man be put to death this day in Israel? For do I, for do not I know that I am this day king over Israel? Therefore the king said unto Shemai, Thou shalt not die. And the king swore unto him. Joseph swore to his brethren, I will not do any evil to you. They were so worried that they were going to die, but he swore to them. I, this was all meant for your good. Remember he said, bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. Yeshua was put into a deep sleep. God himself was born of Mary. And that's what brought the DNA to make him bone of their bone and flesh of their flesh. But inside of there, God himself was dwelling in that human body. And though rejected, he's still bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh. And his mercy endures forever. God bless you. This message today, and uh, just wanted to let you know, we are working diligently on uh, a lot of issues. The Vatican series, I have not forgotten uh, the video that we're doing for um, Benjamin Netanyahu and that will get completed uh, by his grace hopefully this week here we'll be able to get that out so many things that we're working on as I told you we've been we've had threats as well uh, for the Vatican series that we're doing and so we are uh, dealing with a lot of issues in the background uh, we definitely need your support and I'm really asking for your help there uh, it is very evident that we will not be staying here in South Florida. Uh, there's a lot of things that are transpiring as of right now, and uh, I think it's time to make the move that God has called me for. Um, so therefore, we pray. We're asking for your prayers. Uh, we've had some several setbacks. Our car ended up going into the shop uh, the other day, which was unexpected. We don't have a got an older vehicle, but uh, but it was very expensive to get that fixed. Um, but anyway, we are, we just, we definitely ask for your help because without your help, I cannot make this possible. Um, and I know as many of you have said to us, it is a truly a blessing for the Gentile people as well as the Jewish people. And I see that more and more myself, that the need for our Gentile brothers and sisters to, to to recognize what really is true in light of all the evil that is going on and all the misinformation that you are being given to be able to promote the Vatican agenda. It's become more and more clear to us. So we're gonna do our best to, to make sure that you're aware as well of what's happening, what's going on. And I am desperately trying to get full-time. And in the very near future, because of the movie we'll be making, we'll be full-time regardless and there's not going to be any other way and we'll really need your help at that point as well we want to see the jewish people to receive the gospel of mashiach and that time is at hand will you be a part of that god bless you